So I've been wanting to talk about this subject for a little bit, um, just dreams and spiritual warfare in your dreams, how the enemy can attack us in our sleep, um, attack us in our dreams, and also how God works through dreams and visions. We know in Joel chapter 2, 28, it says, you know, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old man will dream dreams and your young man will see visions. Now, I've had a lot of times where the enemy has attacked me in my sleep. I've had very disgusting, uh, perverted sexual dreams at time. I've had dreams that were just so demonic where um, it was like the enemy was kind of trying to flex on me in my sleep when my guard was down and make it feel like, you know, he could hurt me or he could harm my family. And I would wake up and there would just be this evil, you know, feeling all around me to the point where it was just like a a cold, you know, chilling feeling in my room in the middle of the night. And there was sometimes where I woke up and, and my face was just soaked in tears because the dream was so evil. And it's like, like my soul was trying to fight back in the dream, but you know, it was spiritual warfare. And there have been times where I even woke up with, um, the sleep paralysis. I remember one time in particular in South Korea, where, uh, I woke up and I had a, just a disgusting, evil dream. I mean, demon spirits and things running all around, just trying to uh, oppress me and kill me. It was very violent. And um, the, the spirit of fear was trying to overtake me. And it was almost like there was this weight on my chest. And when I woke up, the, the tears were already flowing and I couldn't turn my head to the left or the right. I couldn't move. I couldn't get up. And the funny thing was my Bible was on my bed. And I remember thinking to myself, if, if I can just, you know, reach my sword, if I can just grab my word and open it. And it was a scary feeling because I was just paralyzed, you know, and <clears throat> uh, I, I felt, you know, the, the, the demonic forces and the enemy just talking to me like, you know, uh, I can I can touch you whenever I want. So one of the things, this is transparency that I struggle with is this fear that something bad is going to happen to me. You know, I'm going to get on a plane or I'm going to get in a car and there's going to be an accident and the enemy, he can just take me out whenever he wants. And that's what he tries to do through those dreams. Check this out. Now, the same thing I had a dream last night where we had a prayer meeting in my house with my family and I was really asking the Lord for some directions on some things. And I said, Lord, make it so clear to me. And so when I went to sleep last night, the dream that God gave me, it was like I was laying kind of like this, you know, just kind of kind of limp in his hand. And it was like he had put almost like eye drops, these eye drops into my eye. Right. So it's like I was laying there and I couldn't see if it was like his tears or whatever, but I just saw that he was dropping these drops in my eye. And when he dropped the drop in my eye, it's like it gave me a vision inside of the dream. And he reconformed a lot of things in my life, like clear as day about what church I should be going to, what my next move should be. It was like it was like I was watching a movie of my life in the future, but it also lined up with what God had already been showing me through prayer, through fasting, through counseling with my pastors and, and my brothers. So God put that seed in my mind through a dream, as it says in Joel chapter two, but the enemy is a copycat. The Bible, you know, we know that God, he's the lion of Judah. The Bible says the enemy is like a lion. So he tries to copy and imitate anything that God does. That's why in the Holy Spirit, uh, you get this, this feeling, you know, you get this high and that's why you have weed and you have alcohol. You know, you get drunk in the spirit. The enemy tries to give you a substitute for the things of God instead of you getting that real thing. That's why the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But the same way that God will plant little seeds, like he planted those drops in my eye and it opened my vision and gave me revelation and illumination to the things that were going on in the world. And he said, you know, you're, you're a mouthpiece for me in this generation is the same way that the enemy will come. Right. And he will try to plant a seed in your mind through an evil dream, through some kind of, of negativity. He'll try to put fear in your heart. But you have to remember the Bible says God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And a lot of times what the enemy does is uh, your insecurities and your hurts will come out in your dreams. Your fears will come out in your dreams. This is why you have to pray before you go to sleep. This is why you have to saturate your mind with the word of God. The Bible says give no place to the devil. This is why you have to be careful of the things that you watch. If you know 
that, for example, you're struggling with, you know, I, I just scared that my spouse is going to cheat on me. You shouldn't be watching movies and listening to music where all that kind of stuff is happening. You shouldn't be looking at certain things on the Internet because they, when you go to sleep, the enemy is going to try, to try to attack you and those insecurities and those fears and get you in a mood and, and, and reinforce some things inside of you. So then the next morning you wake up and you're thinking about that dream and, and, and it's just playing over in your mind and you're in such a bad My husband was cheating on me in the dream and it wasn't even a thing, but he's attacking those insecurities. He's attacking those scars, you know, and then a lot of times it's just straight spiritual warfare. You think you just have a dream that was just so disgusting and, and so evil. And it puts this, this weight on you. It put this, you know, God is light, but it puts this darkness around you. And, and God is like a consuming fire, but you feel this coldness, this, this like almost death type of feeling. And, you know, you have to praise your way out of it. You have to worship your way out of it. And you have to acknowledge that spiritual warfare is a real thing. The enemy is running and gunning, trying to take you out however you can. And, um, Ask the Lord, you know, when you get, sometimes when you get a dream that wakes you up in the middle of the night, that's God calling you to pray. He's trying to tell you something. He's trying to show you something. Some of you are having dreams about family members, dreams about the future. He's trying to reveal some things to you and he's calling you to prayer. He doesn't just give you the dream to give you the dream. He gives you the dream and then you need to get up and you need to pray about it. Or if the enemy comes into you and gives you one, you know, a nightmare or whatever you want to call it, you got to still get up and pray against it with the authority that you have through Jesus Christ and the spirit of God that is living inside of you. You got to come against that thing and take dominion of the atmosphere in your home, take dominion over the atmosphere in your room, take dominion over the atmosphere in your mind that the enemy has tried to infiltrate. You guys be blessed and be encouraged in Jesus' name.